Good afternoon. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to try and cover some definitions for some things that came up in some learning, and I won't explain it all. Just going to get right into it. Thank you for watching. <coughs> Phase detector. A phase detector, or phase comparator, is a frequency mixer, analog multiplier, or logic circuit that generates a voltage signal which represents the difference in phase between two signals, between two signal inputs. It is an essential element of the phase locked loop PLL. Detecting phase difference is very important in many applications such as motor control, radar, and telecommunication systems servo mechanisms, and demodulators types. Phase detectors for phase-locked loop circuits may be classified in two types. A type 1 detector is designed to be driven by analog signals or square wave digital signals and produce an output pulse at the difference frequency. I didn't read that wrong, that's what it says. A type 1 detector is designed to be driven by analog signals or square wave digital signals and produces an output pulse at the different frequency. Type 1 detector always produces an output waveform which must be filtered to control the phase locked loop voltage controlled oscillator VCO. A type 2 detector is sensitive only to the relative timing of the edges of the input and reference pulses and produces a constant output proportional to phase difference when both signals are at the same frequency. This output will tend not to produce ripple in the control voltage of the VCO. And there is a picture here for which I will read the caption. Four phase detectors. Signal flow is from left to right. In the upper left is a Gilbert cell which works well for sine waves and square waves, but less well for pulses. In the cases of square waves, it acts as an XOR gate, which can also be made from NAND gates. On the middle left are two phase detectors. Adding feedback and removing one NAND gate produces a time frequency detector. The delay line avoids a dead band. On the right is a charge pump with a filter at its output. So under the heading of types, analog phase detector the phase detector needs to be the phase detector needs to commute the phase detector needs to compute the phase difference of its two input signals let a be the phase of the first input and beta be the phase of the second the actual input signals to the phase detector however are not alpha and beta but rather sinusoids such as a sine of A and a cos of beta. In general, compute, computing the phase difference would involve computing the arc sine and arc cosine of each normalized input to get an ever increasing phase and doing a subtraction. Such an analog calculation is difficult. Fortunately, the calculation can be simplified by using some approximations. And it goes into some math and I didn't want that. I'll read below. A mixer-based detector, example, a Schottky diode-based <coughs> double-balanced mixer provides the ultimate in-phase noise floor performance and in-system sensitivity since it does not create finite pulse widths and at the phase detector output. Another advantage of mixer-based PD is its relative simplicity. Both the quadrature and simple multiplier phase detectors have an input that depends on the input amplitudes as well as the phase difference. In practice, the input amplitudes are normalized. Next heading is digital phase detector. A phase detector suitable for square wave signals can be made from an exclusive OR XOR logic gate. When the two signals being compared are completely in phase, the XOR gate's output will have a constant level of zero. When the two signals differ in phase by the by one degree, the XOR gate's output will be high. Okay, so I think I'll pause it. Okay, now I'm switching over to another Wikipedia article. Phase locked loop a phased a phase locked loop or phase lock loop PLL is a control system that generates an output signal whose phase is related to the phase of an input signal there are several different 
types. The simplest is an electronic circuit consisting of a variable frequency oscillator and a phase detector in a feedback loop. The oscillator generates a periodic signal and the phase detector compares the phase of, the sig of that signal with the phase of the input periodic signal adjusting the oscillator to keep the phases matched. Keeping the input and output phase in lockstep also implies keeping the input and output frequencies the same. Consequently, in addition to synchronizing signals, <coughs> A phase locked loop can track an input frequency or it can generate a frequency that is a multiple of the input frequency. These properties are used for computer clock synchronization, demodulation, and frequency th synthesis. Phase locked loops are widely employed in radio, telecommunications, computers, and other electronic appliances. They can be used to demodulate a signal recover a signal from a noisy communication channel, generate a stable frequency at multiples of an input frequency, frequency synthesis, or distribute precisely timed clock pulses in a digital logic circuits such as microprocessors. Since a single integrated circuit can provide a complete phase locked loop building block, the technique is widely used in modern electronic devices with output frequencies from a fraction of a hertz up to many gigahertz. Uh, practical analogies, automobile race analogy. As an analogy of a PLL, consider an auto race with two cars. One represents the input frequency, the other the PLL's output voltage controlled oscillator frequency. Each lap corresponds to a complete cycle. The number of laps per hour, a speed, corresponds to the frequency. The separation of the cars, a distance, corresponds to the phase difference between the two oscillating signals. During most of the race, each car is on its own and free to pass the other and lap the other. This is analogous to the PLL in an unlocked state. However, if there is an accident, a yellow caution flag is raised. This means neither the race car, this means neither of the race cars is permitted to overtake and pass the other. The two race cars represent the input and output frequency of the PLL in a locked state. Each driver will measure the phase difference, a fraction of the distance around the lap, between himself and the other race car. If the hind driver is too far away, he will increase his speed to close the gap, to close the gap. If he's too close the other car to the other car, he will slow down. The result is that both race cars will circle the track in lock step with a fixed phase difference or constant dis distance between them. Since neither car is allowed to lap the other, the cars make the same number of laps in a given time period. Therefore, the frequency of the two signals is the same. Okay, the history was actually kind of interesting. Spontaneous synchronization of weakly coupled pendulum clocks was noted by an early physicist. Around the turn of the 19th century, Lord Raleigh observed synchronization of weakly coupled organ pipes and tuning forks. In 1919, W. H. Eccles and J. H. Vincent found that two electronic oscillators that had been tuned to oscillate at slightly different frequencies but that were coupled to a resonant circuit would soon oscillate at the same frequency. Automatic synchronization of electronic oscillators was described in 1923 by Edward Victor Appleton. In 1925, Professor David Robertson, the first professor of electrical engineering at the University of Bristol, introduced phase locking in his clock design to control the striking of the Bell Great George in the New Wills Memorial Building. Robertson's clock incorporated an electromechanical device that could vary the rate of oscillation of the pendulum and derived correction signals from a circuit that compared the pendulum phase with that of an incoming telegraph pulse from Greenwich Observatory every morning at 10 o'clock GMT. Apart from including equivalents of every element of modern electronic P LL, Robertson's system was notable in that its phase detector was a relay logic implementation of the phase frequency detector not seen in electronics circuits until the 1970s. Robertson's work predated research towards what was later named the phase lock loop in 1932 when British researchers developed an alternative to Edwin Armstrong's super heterodyne receiver, the homodyne or direct conversion receiver. In the homodyne or 
synchrodyne system, a local oscillator, was tuned to the desired input frequency and multiplied with the input signal. The resulting output signal included the original modulation information. The intent was to develop an alternative receiver circuit that frequency that required fewer tuned circuits than the heterodyne receiver. Since the local oscillator would rapidly drift in frequency, an automatic correction signal was applied to the oscillator, meaning it in the same phase and frequency, maintaining it in the same phase and frequency of the desired signal. The technique was described in 1932 in a paper by Henri de Bellisize in the French journal L'Onde d'Electrique. In analog television, receivers since at least the, 19th, the late 1930s, phase-locked loop horizontal and vertical sweep circuits are locked to synchronization pulses in the broadcast signal. When Cynetics introduced a line of monolithic integrated circuits like the NE565 that were complete phase-locked loop systems on a chip in 1969, applications for the technique multiplied. A few years later, RCA introduced the CD4046 CMOS micropower phase-locked loop, which became a popular integrated circuit. Thank <music> you.